Welcome back, friends. Today, I'm super excited to be covering DeFi Option Vault in Spain Finance. And the reason for the excitement is manifold. First, DeFi Option Vaults are a really simple strategy for the user that represent real innovation in DeFi. So we're going to take some time throughout this video to try to unpack exactly how it works. But don't be afraid, options can be a little bit of a mindfuck. The amazing thing is that Spain Finance has managed a way to make it a one-click automated solution so that anyone can take advantage of it. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now I mentioned sustainable real yield. This is super important because when we look at the history of DeFi, we can probably identify many different stages. An earlier stage, which you may remember, I like to refer to it as a DeFi summer of love. And we were all holding hands and singing on the tunes of Lambo Rich, Mula Mula Money Money. It was amazing, let's be honest. We were all making money in the strangest ways possible. But the reality is, is that it required us to suspend disbelief and ignore maths because it was quietly unsustainable. I don't want to go too deep into it, but the core pillar of it was that the yield was not real. The yield was denominated in weird tokens made up by the exchange and printed en masse to attract people to put money in. It's misleading, it was deceptive, it was not sustainable. Worse, not only was it not possible to make money by farming these tokens, seeking those high yields, but the strategies actually involved doing things that made people lose the money that they put in in the first place. Things like adding liquidity to an automated market maker and suffering in permanent loss. So this new year of DeFi focuses on what we call real yield, which I like to equate to a real product or real users, real value proposition. The easiest way to think about it is, are you solving a problem for someone so that they're happy and willing to pay? So the first major problem that DeFi Option Vaults are solving is the creation of real yield in DeFi, which we really do need in this bear market. But the second major one is making this type of financial instruments accessible to everyone or anyone. Options trading, as I've been learning throughout my research, apparently is very profitable. But the truth is that up until now, it has only been available to sophisticated investors, institutions. It could be locked by jurisdiction. Last time I heard about options trading was probably Nancy Pelosi. So I think that goes to say a little bit about how out of reach these concepts can be. But fear not, the blockchain is here to level the playing field. So let's start by introducing a couple of concepts that we need to understand about options trading. As always, this channel is purely information and entertainment. Nothing here is financial advice. This is why we give you as much information as possible so that you understand what is happening. But if you choose to sip ahead, all you have to do is deposit your assets and speed finance and pray. It's a one-click automated solution. So there are a couple of concepts that we really need to understand in the wonderful world of options. The simplest way to look at options trading is an option is literally an option to buy an asset into the future at a fixed price that is determined today. So let's say that I pay $1,000 to buy an option to buy $50,000 worth of near in one month time at a price of $2.30. There's only two possible outcomes. When that option expires in one month's time and the time is flexible, it is also agreed ahead of time. Either the price of near is above the fixed price. I think we said 230, say the price is 290. There is a big gap there. I exercise my option because I am buying something at 230 that is now worth 290. That margin between 230 and 290 is our profit. In case that the price is below the strike price, we simply choose not to exercise our option. That example, an option to buy into the future, or you thinking that the price may go up, is called a call option. And whether the option is above or below the strike price at the time of expiry is what is known as expiring in the money or out of the money. The other type of options, it's called a put option. This is when you purchase an option to sell an asset at a specific price in time. With this newfound knowledge, let's head over to the Spain Finance DOV website. We can see that the Ethereum, the SDNIR, and the NIR strategies are covered calls, and the USDC is a cash secured put. Let's click on the NIR one. 
The strategy generates yield from option premiums by running a weekly automated covered call strategy. We mentioned before that this is a one-click automation strategy. So let's start by outlining all the things that Spain has automated here. First, there's an option section where the buyers can buy the options. We don't have to worry about any of that. Second, and this is super important, is the time frame. We've got a fixed one week epoch. If you want to participate, every Friday. The third one, which is actually really cool, is the strategy algorithmically selects the optimal strike price for call options. On average, the strike price tends to be about 10 to 25% higher than the current price, depending on volatility. This is really cool because obviously there is a risk to the strategy of the option hitting the strike price, so the buyers get paid out of the vault. If we scroll down, we can see the vault performance. The NEAR and USDC vaults have been around for the longest, and so far there hasn't been a week when the strike price has been hit. This is like good news and bad news because I guess that it also means that the price of the NEAR has not been going up. But if we look at the USDC vault, the very first week it did realize a loss. The put price was 190 and unfortunately we did fall below that. Back to how this works, the strategy also means the near call options that match the number of near deposits by investors. Once the minting is completed, the spin batch auction starts where the minted options are sold to option buyers. Next. The auction process. Once the auction starts, option buyers are invited to place in bids where they specify the number of options that they want to buy and what price you're willing to pay. Best price bidders receive the options and when the auction ends, they pay the near for the option premium. If the option ends out of the money, this is the near that then goes to the vault depositors. Not much happens after the auction has taken place. We just got to wait one week for the option to expire. As we mentioned before, the strategy is profitable if the near price at the moment of options expiration is lower than the strike price. In this case, the options would expire out of the money and the collateral used for minting the options is returned back into the strategy. In case of the price of near at the moment of expiration being higher than the strike price, options will be expiring in the money and it is profitable for option buyers to exercise their options. That means that the strategy will lose some funds to pay the yield to option buyers. I strongly encourage everyone to go to the strategy details where you can find the information for each week's epoch. Let's have a quick view at the general information for the near vault. It will show you the total amount of near deposited, the capacity of near this is super important. Each vault has a maximum capacity of funds that can be deposited. If you do want to get into a vault and it is already full, do not despair because ever since I started monitoring this and learning and putting some money in myself, I have seen the capacity increase. So just keep an eye on spin finance as they are gradually increasing capacity. I am not sure what people's reasoning is for entering the near vault when they could enter the SD near vault. Both vaults work very much the same. It is safe to assume that if one hits the strike price and is out of the money, the other one will do it too. But the only difference is that SD near itself is a yield generating asset. So you're now earning from two different sources. The first one would be the protocol rewards through SD near. And the second would be the option premiums from Spain Finance. That's a bit of alpha for the few people that watch this video. The last thing are the strategy risks. As always, do your own research. Make sure that the risks are suitable to you. There's a really good chart on the Spain Finance documentation. I strongly encourage everyone to go check it out. Link is down in the comment section below. In that chart, we can see a comparison between the covered call and the cash secured put strategies. And this comparison seeks to capture what the risk is for each type of strategy in each market condition. On the first column, we have all the possible market conditions. First, there may be a significant price in the underlying asset price. I'm still hoping that near goes back to all time highs and beyond. The second option is that there is a slight increase in the underlying asset price. So that could be steady gains as opposed to a 60% pump. 
The third option is that we have a flat market. The fourth option is that there is a slight decrease of the underlying asset price. And then the fifth option is that there is a significant decrease of the underlying asset price. And then on the columns on the right, we have a covered call strategy that would be the ETH near SD near the cash secured put strategy with USDC. And we have the default holding the underlying asset, which would be the crypto or holding stable coins. In the first row, say if near pumps, we can see that the covered call strategy would earn premiums and a slight revaluation of the investment asset in dollar terms. Why in dollar terms? Because we would be losing some of the near or the asset could be a senior, it could be ETH to pay out the option buyers. If the market pumps, the people that had the USDC cash secured strategy still earns their premium. There is no risk of the strike price being hit because the price is going up, not down. If, on the contrary, we were to hold the underlying assets, say we just have our near or our SC near on the wallet, we would experience a significant revaluation of the asset in dollar terms. So holding the near would probably be better during a massive pump over having a covered call strategy. However, this is where you start to think, how often does a market pump? And presumably, if you join the covered call strategy for long enough, the accumulated gains of all the weeks where the market didn't pump by that much would probably be about the same or more as the dollar gains from the big pump. If you're simply holding stable coins, just no change. On the second category, very similar, there's still the premium for both strategies and the slight valuation of the investment asset in dollar terms. We can see that just by holding the asset, we are already at a disadvantage because let's say that the strike price is not hit. The reevaluation of the investment asset, say near in dollar terms, is the same. We had near at two bucks, now we have near at 230. But by simply holding the asset, we're not earning any premiums. So we're already missing out on some. If the market is flat, we're still earning premiums for both strategies. But if you're holding near or if you're simply holding stable coins, you are not really earning or losing anything. And then if the market starts going down slightly, both joining a near vault or holding near would have the same effect of your assets being worthless. You know, near was two bucks, now it is 170. However, joining the covered call also means that we are receiving a premium to offset some of these capital losses. And then finally, if there is a massive dump, holy God, I hope not anymore. You still receive the premium, which hopefully makes up for something. And both having the near in a DOV or holding it in your wallet would experience significant revaluation of the asset in dollar terms. The cash secured put is actually fascinating because the only scenario where you actually would experience a loss is if there is that big dump namely the price drops below the strike price. For all the other scenarios, you would still earn the premiums, which are a big difference from simply holding the cash. I know that was a lot of information, so we'll probably leave it at that. But let me know in the comment section below if you find this interesting, if you enter one of the vaults and if you start making some moolah, 